Hi, Kerry Kelly here. Welcome back to the Maya Moe Shop. I've done a whole lot of work on the ukulele this week, and so coming up is a video montage of what I thought were some of the most interesting parts of the building process. Um, I will be on the chat if anyone has any questions. I'll try to get to them as quickly as possible, or I can be reached directly. Uh, my contact info is at the bottom of every page of the mayamoe.com website. So feel free to reach out directly if you have questions and enjoy the video. Here I am using a flush router to trim the excess off the top and the back of the instrument. Now I'm making sure that the top of the body is flat and square so that the neck joint will work well. Here I am using a router to create a channel around the outside of the instrument. This is where the binding will go. I'll then run a second router that makes a smaller channel inside the first one where what's called the purfling, which is a small black, white, black strip will go. Here the body of the instrument is clamped into a special contraption where I use a router with a special bit, a dovetail bit, that's used to route out the joint where the neck will go. Here I am going to glue the head plate which I have pre-made uh, using wood from the body of the instrument, the curly koa, along with some ebony. And that gets glued onto a neck blank of the tenor size. It doesn't matter exactly where it goes. I just sort of put it where I think it looks nice. There's no set exact spot it needs to be. And as you can tell, I, uh, I work very fast. Now I'm fitting the neck onto the body and using a template to mark out exactly where the fretboard will go on that neck blank, as well as the outline of the headstock. Okay, I've cut out the shape of the headstock on the neck blank, and now I use the special clamp to drill holes exactly where the tuners should go. Okay, we're moving right along and I have prepared some binding strips of ebony using the same side bender that I used for bending the sides and I am going to glue them in place along with the purfling that gets tucked right in between the binding and the body of the instrument. Notice again how quickly I work. Here I am carving the neck. I use a combination of rasps and a spoke shave to get the work done. 
And uh, as you can see, I also do this very, very quickly. So the rasps and spoke shave leave the neck very rough. And now I use a series of different sandpapers to smooth it out and make it uh, very close to where the final playable neck will be. And lastly, for this week anyway, I am dressing the frets, making the fret ends nice and smooth for the player using a series of different tools. Uh, the final one actually being uh, nothing more fancy than a nail file.